Good morning, we're just gonna give a minute for people to come in from the waiting room. Hello? As a reminder, Hello? please mute yourself when you arrive unless you're appearing or testifying before the board. This is Virgil Aiello. Great, thank you. If you could please mute yourself until it is your time to present, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the licensing board. <clears throat> Today I'm joined by Commissioner Liam Curran. <laughs> excuse me, and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce our new Executive Secretary, Danny Green, who opened up the meeting. Today is his first transactional meeting with us, and we're happy to have you with us today, Danny. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. As a reminder, please mute yourself unless you're appearing or testifying before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee or the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and commissioners. Following questions from the board, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. Now calling item number one, Venice Pizza LLC, located at 39 Savin Hill Avenue in Dorchester, has applied for a common victualler license to be exercised on the above, First floor, dining room with 34 seats, kitchen, serving counter between kitchen and dining, and takeout window. Two bathrooms, office, office and storage space in rear. The basement is for storage and meters and is kept clean. Uh, who will be uh, present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, Jennifer Englehart, I'm the property manager. Great, please go ahead, Ms. Englehart. Hi, um, so um, we are applying for this common uh, Vic with the takeout window. We think the takeout window would be a great um, way to serve our customers and it will be a nice easy way for our customers to order and get their food fast. It will also help with expediting um, food services such as Grubhub and Uber Eats and all of those services to obtain their orders for their customers. And um, we're excited to get it up and rolling. Okay. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Um, was the was the takeout window part of the community process when you went to the community? Um, yes, yes, and it was very well received. Okay, and what would the hours be of the takeout window? Uh, those have not been determined yet. Okay, what were you thinking? Um, probably uh, the hours, I would say 11 a.m. to maybe 10 p.m. And what are the hours of um, Venice Pizza, the restaurant, the regular part of the restaurant? Um, you know what? I just realized the restaurant closes at nine, I believe. Um, so it will be the duration of the, the restaurant hours, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. Um, and has the takeout window been approved by ISD? Have you gone through that process? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions for Jennifer? No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. <clears throat> George Schwinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to go on record in support of the proposal. Um, the takeout window was a part of the community process, um, though parking remains a concern in the area in general. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Okay, hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item number two, Sugar and Spice LLC, located at 834 Blue Hill Ave in Dorchester, has applied for a common victualler license to be exercised on the above, open floor plan with seating, under counter storage, kitchenette against the wall, manager Arlene Campbell, hours of operation 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Who was present on behalf of the applicant? Is 
Is there anybody here on behalf of Sugar and Spice LLC? Yes. yes. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. You may okay. proceed, Ms. Cousins. All right. Thank you. Um, so yes, we are trying to uh, have a dessert place with ice cream, um, cake, um, and it's <clears throat> sorry, hours are correct. Anywhere from six to eight, um, spanning from Tuesday through Sunday. Our main menu item is ice cream, and then we also offer um, cakes and um, a little bit of coffee in the morning. Okay, um, thank you. How many seats are you anticipating having in this space? Eight. What, eight? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions for the applicant? No further questions, thank you. None, thank you. Can I say something? Sure. Um, Country Kitchen Restaurant and Bar is our neighbors and I've been here for 16 years and the bakery slash ice cream coffee is the only thing I don't sell and it was anonymous. The neighbors just keep asking me and asking me and asking me. So I figured out. Oh, I'll just do it if I can get the okay. Because I only sell lunch, dinner, and bar over that side. And they kept saying, when are you going to do some dessert and some coffee? And I said, all right, I'll do it. So that's the only reason. That's my main reason, because the neighborhood around me keep asking for it. Okay, so would it, So are you, are you Arlene? Yes, I am. Okay, so you'll be the manager at both places? No, nope, my daughter, Shireen, will be managing that one, because I have okay. to take care of that. But, but they'll complement yeah. each other. That's the idea? Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, it's a very innovative idea. Um, um, I don't have any questions, commissioners. Back to you. Any other questions for either um, Arlene or Shireen? No? OK. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, uh, yes. Dante Peebles here from the Mary's Local Neighborhood Services. Sorry, good morning. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, again, Gonfi people here from the Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, we would want to, the mayor's office, we want to ask that the board actually hold the vote um, just so the uh, applicant can meet with the uh, specific uh, civic civic association in the area. Um, I don't believe they went through a community process just yet. So that, again, we would ask that they, uh, the board does hold the vote um, so we can get them in front of the uh, neighborhood association. Thank you. Okay, and Dante, do you know when the next meeting is? At this very moment, I don't. I just, I was on a meeting last night with uh, Talbot Norfolk Triangle, who I believe was the uh, Civic, but I don't believe they are. It's a little bit out of their radius. So in the next couple, uh, a day or two, I, I can reach out to you with that, um, that date. Okay, so um, Arlene, if you in, get together with ONS and find out when the next time the neighborhood meeting um, is being held, you could present to them? Problem. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify uh, in support or opposition of this application? Okay, hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item number three, Filia de Machalai LLC, doing business as Pink Carrot, located at 115 Salem Street, has applied for a common victualler license to be exercised on the above street level dining kitchen prep area in back and bathroom, lower level prep and office. Manager Robert Fouts, hours of operation 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, Robert Fouts on behalf of Figlia Di Michelli. Great, please go ahead. Uh, how are you? Thanks for having me. Uh, Pink Carrot was created by Joanne Bertolino Figlia Di Michelli's owner um, in an effort to bring healthy and organic and good food to her neighborhood, which is the North End. Um, I feel like there's a good reason for it with all the Italian food here. And we're con converted the uh, old Pushkar Pizzeria to the Pink Carrot. And here we are applying for the Common Vic. Uh, thank you for explaining that. Could you tell me how many seats will be in the space? Uh, roughly 40. Okay. So can you give me some examples of the type of food? You said it's healthy and organic, but is it, sure. traditional, um, uh, what's the menu like? 
there'll be coffee, there'll be smoothies, juices, salads, wraps, okay. and veggie plates. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? None, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like oh. to testify? I see uh, John Romano from ONS, but he's on mute. I wasn't sure if he was looking to. Oh, sorry about that, John. I missed you. Oh, hey, we normally we don't testify on CV licenses, but we're excited for the business to be coming okay. into the area. So thank you all. Okay, I couldn't tell if you were trying to speak or not. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And once again, any other individuals who wish to testify? Okay. Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number four, Apollonia Enterprises LLC, doing business as Fuel America, located at 114 Western Ave in Alston, has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above. First floor, approximately 1,400 square feet of service area, front counter and barista bar. One customer seating room at the back of the house, kitchen and storage area behind back of house hallway. Four egress entrances, two to front sidewalk, two to back interior hallway. Outdoor seasonal patio, May to September, on private property with 16 seats, same hours as the restaurant. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, my name is Jeff Panasia. I'm one of the managing partners. Okay. Please go ahead. Well, we, um, we actually started Fuel America back in 2012. Uh, we opened our first location in Brighton, near Boston College. And uh, since then, we've um, opened a couple locations at the airport. We're no longer in the airport anymore, but we had two locations in the airport. We've uh, built a, a caf coffee house cafe roastery in Worcester. We actually roast our own coffee there, and we have a second cafe. Um, we have franchised the business. We have a franchisee building a, a fuel in Weymouth and a franchisee building a second fuel in Worcester. Um, we have a new location we just signed a lease for in Comab. So we're continuing to build out the business in a couple different ways, franchising business, our own company stores, and we have a roastery and we sell our coffees in Market Basket and Stop and Shop. So as it relates to um, Alston and this location, we're very excited. Uh, actually, Harvard came to us and asked us uh, to come to their new applied science campus. Um, and they wanted a brand that had really great coffee house DNA, but fresh foods. And if you don't mind, I'll, I'd like to share my screen and show you a couple things, including the menu, if you wouldn't mind. We actually don't share the screen. If you want to, oh, just, okay. if you want to submit it to the board, we'll make sure the commissioners um, get copies of it. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just describe it then. Basically, we, as I mentioned, we're kind of rooted, uh, our core DNA is a coffee house as we roast our own coffees and so forth. But we've got, um, and, and I would say, I would describe this as leaning into better for you, freshly made foods. One of the reasons that Harvey came to us is they wanted freshly made products along with great coffees and teas. So we've got a whole host of, um, you know, espresso based drinks, drip coffees, nitro coffees, uh, cold brews, um, we have smoothies, we have salads, sandwiches, all day breakfast, and a whole host of uh, acai bowls, pitaya bowls, kale bowls, and coconut bowls, which are, uh, an acai sorbet is a Brazilian fruit, high in antioxidants, and it's top, all of those bowls are topped with fruits and granola and, and other uh, better for you products, ingredients, yeah. Thank so, you. Yep. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. No, thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, like on record, support of this proposal. The applicant met with the Austin Civic Association, received their full support. Uh, many residents were familiar with the, the Brighton location, we're excited to have it in the Austin neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Any other individuals who wish to testify? 
I just had a quick question. I'm sorry, I think I missed the explanation of the hours that it would be open. Uh, we're going to start uh, with a 7 o'clock, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. to start. Our intention will be to have broader hours. Uh, as, as soon as we open, we'll, we'll expect to be hiring more folks. As you, as you know, it's, it's uh, you know, hiring folks is, is tough right now. And as we find out what the hours, uh, the customers will like. So we, uh, in Brighton, we originally were open until 8 p.m. Uh, Pre-COVID. And now we're open until 5 p.m. and we're expanding those hours. So we'll plan to do the same for, for Austin. And it, it sounds like one of your key differentiators from the Swiss bakers and the pavement and the Sorry, Starbucks that aren't far would be the, the, the Sorry, interesting array of foods. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, who was speaking? Uh, my name is Clark Warner. I'm a neighborhood, I'm a neighbor um, in Alston. I live right around the corner from where fuel will be. Okay. We got a registered letter explaining to us that this meeting was going to happen and yep. that we could come. Thank you. We're just trying to go in order, Mr. Warner. So um, in the future, please ask to be recognized and then we'll, we'll, we'll take uh, your testimony. Oh, my apologies. I, I raised my hand in the thing and I, I thought okay. Okay. I have to go. Great. Thank you. Are there any further individuals who wish to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number five, Yard House USA, Inc., doing business as Yard House, located at 110 Huntington Ave. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Stephen Arakalian to Jose D. Lopez, Jr. Attorney Joseph Devlin. Hi, Elizabeth Pisano here. I'm Attorney Devlin's associate. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, we are here to propose a manager change for, for Jose Lopez. Um, he is a US citizen and a Massachusetts resident. He has over 20 years of experience in the food and beverage industry. So he is familiar and knows all the rules and regulations of this board and the ABCC. Um, there are no other operational changes here, and he should be on the Zoom if you have any further questions. Jose, are, are you with us on the hearing today? I see him, okay. Great, thank you. And your attorney covered the uh, four manager of record questions. I don't have any other questions. Commissioners, do you? Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Okay, hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number seven, uh, sorry, number six, Wahlburgers South Bay Company, LLC, doing business as Wahlburgers, located at 9 District Ave in Dorchester. Holder of a South Bay restricted, common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from John Bart Rogan to Paul Wahlberg. Attorney Marcy Costa. Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Marcy Costa, McDermott, Colty, and Miller on behalf of the applicant and also with me is Paul Wahlberg, the proposed manager of record. Paul has over uh, 20 years in the food and beverage industry. He is a previously approved manager of record by this board in the ABCC. He is a US citizen and a Massachusetts resident and is aware of the rules and regulations as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol. Um, this board, the state and the ABCC. Um, I have Paul on the call. There'll be no other operational changes. If you have any questions, please let us know. I think you summed up. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Wahlberg. Do you have any other questions, Commissioner Corona, Commissioner Saxon? No, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you all. Now calling item seven, Rosa's Liquors, Inc., doing business as Rosa's Liquors, located at 1568 Dorchester Ave in Dorchester. Holder of a retail package store, Al Alcoholic Beverages License, has petitioned for a change of manager of the licensed business from Maria Rosa to Altagracia Rosario. Attorney Jennifer Allen. Good morning. I represent Rosa's Liquors. I'm Jennifer Allen. 
uh, and the request to change the manager from Maria Rosa to Alta Gracia Rosario. She is also here logged in on the Zoom. Um, Mrs. Rosario is already a 75% stockholder and has interest in the store has been here. She has over 20 years of experience in the liquor industry. Um, and is seeking to take over from Maria, who's moving into retirement now. She's well qualified. She's familiar with the rules of the ABCC and the City of Boston Licensing Board. She is also a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. Other than that, there's no other operational changes with this request. Uh, thank you, Attorney Allen, and uh, thank you, Ms. Rosario, for joining us. I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? No, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item eight, Eddie V's Holdings, LLC, doing business as Eddie V's, located at 800 Boylston Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from David Crow to Adam B. Kalari. Attorney Joseph Devlin. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Elizabeth Pisano here again for Attorney Devlin from Upton, Connell and Devlin on behalf of the applicant. The proposed manager, Adam Kalari, is a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. He has many years of experience in the restaurant industry, and he has been with Eddie Wee's uh, since 2019. He is familiar with the rules and regulations of this board and the ABCC relating to the sale and service of alcoholic beverages, and there are no other operational changes. Um, Adam is on this call this morning, so if you have any further questions, please let us know. Thank you, Attorney Pisano. When I see Mr. Kalari on the hearing. Thank you for joining us. I don't have any further questions. Commissioners, do you? No, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number nine. P.F. Chang's China Bistro, Inc., doing business as P.F. Chang's China Bistro, located at 8 Park Plaza. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from John McGonigal to Freddie Camacho. Attorney Andrew Upton. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, Attorney Green. Andrew Upton from Upton, Connell, and Devlin for the applicant. Uh, with me is Freddie Camacho, the proposed manager of record. He is on the Zoom. Uh, he has 10 years of experience in the restaurant industry. He's a U.S. citizen. He is a Hyde Park resident. He's familiar with the rules and regulations of the ABCC and this board. And there will be no operational changes at the restaurant, just a change of manager. And we're glad to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Attorney Upton. And thank you for joining us, Mr. Camacho. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? No, thank you. Or the manager? All right. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who wish to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now calling item number 10, Star Markets Company, doing business as Star Market, located at 90 Causeway Street, uh, holder of a retail package store, Al Alcoholic Beverages License, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors of the corporation. Uh, Attorney Nicholas Azula, do I understand correctly that items 10 and 11 uh, concern the same transactional matter? Yes, sir, that is correct. Great, then I will also call item 11, Shaw Supermarkets Inc, doing business as Star Market, located at 53 Huntington Ave, holder of a retail package store, alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors of the corporation. Attorney Azula. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, and uh, likewise welcome Mr. Executive Secretary to the board, um, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, here on behalf of the licensees uh, as read into the record. Uh, these are both uh, administrative housekeeping items on behalf of the licensee. Uh, this is a change of officers and directors application 
one of the listed directors on the liquor licenses um, has retired, Cynthia Garnett, and she has been replaced as a director by John Scuchamara, uh, who's a Massachusetts resident and one of the licensees vice presidents. Um, also, another officer has left the company. Uh, she was just listed as a, as a vice president, Laura Donald, and she's simply been removed from the license. So uh, we are looking to update those individuals on the liquor licenses to be current with what is on file with the state uh, for the corporations. Um, the rest of the names on the liquor licenses uh, will remain unchanged. And um, for the record, there are no operational changes to the store itself, no changes to layout, hours of operation, manager of record, um, et cetera. So again, strictly just the housekeeping administrative paperwork uh, application, uh, but of course, happy to, to answer any questions um, you might have. And thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Attorney Vizula. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you? <clears throat> no, thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item 12, 99 Restaurants of Boston, LLC, doing business as 99 Restaurant and Pub, located at 29 to 31 Austin Street in Charlestown. Holder of a common victual or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers in the corporation. Attorney Joseph Devlin. Good morning, Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell and Devlin on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a change of LLC managers. Um, Good Little Party has left the company and has been replaced by Wendy Harkness as LLC manager. And this is the only change and there are no operational changes. Thank you, Attorney Pisano. Commissioners, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item 13, SSP America Boss LLC doing business as Wahlburgers, located at Logan Airport 300 Terminal C in East Boston. Holder of an airport common victual or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for change of ownership interest. Um, who's present on behalf of the applicant? Amanda Taylor is here from the Skeen Law Firm. Great, thank you, Attorney Taylor. And um, do I understand correctly that items 14 and 15 also represent the same transactional matter? Yes. Okay, I'll call those in as well. Um, calling item 14, SSP America Boss LLC, doing business as Shoujo, 300 Logan Airport, Terminal C in East Boston, holder of an airport common victual or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for change of ownership interest. And item number 15, SSP America Boss LLC, doing business as Tamas Call, 300 Logan Airport, Terminal B in East Boston, holder of an airport common victual or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for change of ownership interest. You may proceed. Um, yes, this is just to report a minor um, ownership change. One of the members of SSP America BOS LLC is CLO Concessions LLC. Um, they're a 30% member. And one of the members of CLO Concessions LLC is Sergio Reyes. And um, he has, let me just double check here, 10% um, interest in CLO Concessions. And he is being removed. Um, and his interest is being redistributed to the other members of Cielo Concessions. There's no new members being added. So we're simply removing one of the members of the holding companies. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? No, thank you. Okay. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who wish to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will call items 16 and 17 together as they represent transactions with the same license premise. Now calling number 16, DeLuca's Market Inc. doing business as DeLuca's Market located at 7211 Charles Street 
holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the location of the licensed business from 7 to 11 Charles Street to 9 to 15 Charles Street. Secondly, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from rear and side exits for emergency at 7 to 11 Charles Street and rear and front exits at 13 to 15 Charles Street, two rooms first floor at 7 to 11 Charles Street, four rooms and storage in basement at 7 to 11 Charles Street and 13 to 15 Charles Street. Two, premise consists of two rooms on first floor of 9 to 15 Charles Street, plus two rooms for retail on basement level and two rooms in basement for storage. Total approximate square footage is 1,521. And item 17, DeLuca's Market Corp, doing business as DeLuca's Deli at 7 Charles Street, has applied for a common vigiler seven-day wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above, located at 7 Charles Street, Boston, on one floor total, building approximately 1,521 square feet. Service areas will be in the front of the building, approximately 250 square feet, with table for up to 20 persons. Manager, Virgil Aiello, closing time, 11 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? My name is Virgil Aiello, president of DeLucas. Great, you Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Aiello. Can we begin with number 16 and you can explain to us about um, what you're proposing as far as amending the description and um, the package store license on that side? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, currently, uh, the, the, um, the, the property is located from number seven to number 15, Charles. So it's, it's actually three buildings, seven, nine, and 11, which is one building, and uh, 13, 15, which is the third building. And uh, we would like to change the location of the um, takeout license from number seven to 15 to number nine to 15, which would mean number seven would no longer be part of the license premises for the takeout, uh, on the off-premises, I should say. Yeah. And which would mean that we would then apply for a a a, um, a, a non takeout license for number seven. I don't know if I explained it clearly or not. Okay. So um, again, focusing on number sixteen, which is a package store license at numbers nine to fifteen, you would be you would be uh, downsizing the amount of um, product you're selling. Um, on that no, no actually, actually wouldn't be down pro downsizing the products at all because we're currently not using number seven for any any of the uh, um, the sale of the of the off premises um, items. So the, it would be it would mean the same. We would just be changing the the formality of the uh, named address. Okay. And then moving on to number 17, you're applying for a seven day wine and malt beverage license um, to be located at number seven. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about this proposal? Uh, yes, uh, we right now, uh, DeLucas has a, uh, a kitchen in the, in the rear of number seven. And uh, we sell um, uh, uh, takeout food from that area. And we have a CV license for that area for 20 tables. And what we'd like to do is to be able to add the malt and, and wine license to serve at those same 20 tables, which are currently in existence. What kind of food do you um, sell now under the CV license? Sorry? What kind of food do you serve presently under your CV license? Uh, well, we have prepared food in the kitchen, uh, anywhere from, uh, well, mostly it's deli sandwiches but also uh, pastas, uh, chicken, uh, meat, um, salads, and, uh, and vegetables. So Being what vegetables. are you envisioning with this uh, beer and wine license? Sorry? Can you tell me what your vision is with this beer and adding this beer and wine license to oh, yeah. okay. what you're serving? Okay, okay. The, the vision there is, is that, um, We've had customers come in and request uh, whether or not we could serve them charcuterie boards, which would be ch uh, cheese and meat uh, uh, samplings with beer and wine at a, at a table, sit down table. And we told them, no, we would not, we would not license to do that. 
And that gave us the idea that uh, there was a demand in the neighborhood from both the residents and, and non-residents for that type of service. And we think that would be a natural accompaniment. I, I would like to just go, go back if I could and just uh, give a very, very brief synopsis of where, how we got to this point. Uh, there's been a steady progression since 1900 when DeLuca's was a fruit store. In 1952, we added fresh meat. And then in 1979, we added uh, takeout uh, um, wine and beer and liquor. And then uh, now we're in 2021, and we'd like to have the addition, additional uh, permission to serve malt and wine at a table. So that's how we've come to this point in time. I personally have helped uh, to run Zaluka since I was a preteen, and I have still been doing that all these years, except for some interim time when I was in the military. And uh, I have uh, two daughters who are hoping to take, or planning to take over the business, but that wouldn't change our operation that much. Instead of, uh, of them helping me run the business, I would be helping them. So I, I, in, anticipate, in, in anticipation of that, we would, of course, be coming back to the board at the appropriate time for, for change of uh, authorities in the, in the company. So that's how we got to, to this point in time today. Okay. And the seating at this at number seven would be for 20 people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And before we move on to the um, public testimony, you would be the manager of record, Mr. Aiello? Yes, I would. Are you a citizen? I am a citizen. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Right. I'm a resident of the Commonwealth as well. Yes, okay. ma'am. These, these are just our standard manager of record questions for anyone who's applying to be manager of a, a, an alcohol or a beer and wine license. The third question yes, is, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Well, I've been working at Toulouse since I was a preteen, so I've had okay. a, all those years of experience. Thank you. Um, are you familiar with- They have served in every position. Okay. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay. Are you the manager of record for the package store license on the other side? Uh, I don't remember now if it's myself or my brother. I can't remember. I think okay. it might be my brother, but I, I don't remember. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions um, on number 16 or number 17? No questions, thanks. Not at the moment, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, our office hosted in a butters meeting on July 14th, 2021, and uh, a number of concerns were raised by abutters and neighbors. And since then, we've received a large amount of letters of opposition in regards to this proposal. Um, the applicant also met with the Beacon Hill Civic Association and um, he, they voted in opposition to this proposal as well. So at this time, our office would like to go on record in opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kennedy Avery from Councilor Box Office. We also would like to go on a record of opposition for item number 17 for a seven day wine and milk beverages license given the community opposition. Thank you. Thank you. And we did receive Councilor Box uh, letter. So thank you for forwarding that to us. Are there any further elected officials or representatives who wish to testify? Okay. Are there any other individuals who would like to, te to testify? And please identify yourself. Well, please. Yeah. Hold on, Mr. Ayala. We have some people who have their hands raised. Yes. Yep, I, I see a hand raised. You, you may speak. Please identify thank yourself. You. Oh, yes, thank you. My name is Renee Nylands, and I'm speaking on behalf of both the Zoning and Licensing Committee and the Board of Directors for the Beacon Hill Civic Association. You're in receipt of the letter that was sent to you, I believe. I'd like to comment on uh, both what Molly and uh, Kennedy mentioned. During separate neighborhood meetings, residents voiced numerous concerns such as the condition of the premises, the history of various code violations, absence of active on-site table service, lack of specific plans for dedicated facilities or needed personnel to request or to support the proposed license, 
And in addition, as previously stated, the Civic Association received many calls and letters, and the vast majority um, opposed the proposal. I'd also like to mention that during the course of the various neighborhood meetings in the Civic Association meetings, it wasn't clear what the involvement of the daughters are or will be. It seemed to change from meeting to meeting, so that wasn't clear to us as well. The Board of Directors did vote unanimously to support the vote of the CL ZLC in opposition of this. So therefore, the Beacon Hill Civic Association respectfully requests that you reject the application. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? I would like to speak. Let's just check that there's nobody else uh, that doesn't. I don't see anyone else who's asked to speak on this. Um, I'm comfortable with giving Mr. Aiello another opportunity to sum up his comments. That's fine. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Aiello. Thank, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'd first like to start off by saying that um, there have been, uh, I realize that there have been uh, various complaints uh, brought forward and I'll address those in a moment. But first I'd like to say that we have had some um, emails in favor of DeLucas, one of them from a Mar Mar Margo Bolt, who's a uh, resident of Beacon Hill. And I think Ms. Bolt and her, her email uh, address the situation very succinctly. Uh, and I don't know if the, if the board has a copy of her email or not, but in, in case you don't, I can provide you a copy or I can just read what she said. I'm a Beacon Hill resident of seven years, willing to express my support of the Lucas market proposal for non-premises beer and wine. I'm delighted that an establishment with rich local history would take on a new initiative to offer more to the community and expand the scope of the operations. In fact, it seems like a very natural complement to their existing services. I believe this new venture would continue to add to the vibrant culture that is Beacon Hill's Charles Street without disrupting neighborhood and give people, residents, <coughs> customers, and business alike a fresh, refreshed place of interest. What a wonderful opportunity to further invest in a legacy, family-owned business, iconic brand and location, and the overall Epicurean experience of our home on the hill. I hope you will take this into consideration and sincerely appreciate your time. And then there's just one other short email I'd like to present and that's from uh, a neighbor, Jeffrey DeCarlo, who said that uh, as a, a Beacon Hill resident form and a customer of DeLucas, I fully support the subject license. Uh, license. Lucas provides significant value to our neighborhood and the community. I believe that the sit down wine and beer license would provide a wonderful value and enjoyable experience to both residents and tourists alike. <clears throat> to that, I'd like to add that we have had a petition in our store in support of our application and that we have had over 500 people sign in favor and the, the commission has a copy of yep. the petition which stated we support the Lucas market request for license to serve beer and wine to its customers at its stable service area at 7 Mr. Charles Street. We, every email yep. that's forwarded to the board is shared with each of the commissioners and we do read and review that before we vote. So in the interest okay. of time, if you don't think we've received it, I suggest you forward it, but we're gonna see if there's anyone else who would like to testify need the support. Well, there's a couple of things that I would like to say. Uh, regarding the specific complaints, that the, they they <clears throat> they mentioned that the, they they thought the condition of the premises was subpar, and that they have a history of violations. Well, certainly we have had visits from inspectional services department, but I will I will say that we have a a uh, uh, we have no violations at all with inspectional services, and they have given us a uh, a complete. Um, approval of the of the uh up until through the last um, inspection that they have made okay. they, they also complained that uh, we have an absence of active on-site table service and uh I'll, I, will, I will point out that in uh, in february in 2013 we signed a good neighbor agreement with the civic association when we first uh, um, ap uh, applied for our uh, common victuals license at that time the they, uh, Civic Association stipulated that we have to use these tables for the quote, sole purpose for customers to, to consume takeout food and products and non-alcoholic beverages. So they actually required us not to have sit down service, rather to, to allow people to sit down and use the tables for takeout food, which we have complied with. 
uh, we have also tried to be good neighbors when there was a fundraiser for to raise money to, to maintain the overall appearance of Child Street for its entirety, we contributed $3,000 to that cause. Uh, okay. The, uh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. If there's more you would like to add, please submit it to the board in writing. We're, we're gonna move on to the next item. Right, before, yes, just really quickly, one procedural question for the record, Mr. Aiello. Should the board vote not to grant a new Section 12 license for 7 Charles Street, do you still wish to move forward with amending your license premise as described in item number 16? Uh, no, we would not go forward with that, no. Thank you. All right, we will now be moving on to item number 18, and the board will take this under advisement. Calling number 18. Thank you. Rosa's Group, LLC doing business as La Casa del Pandabono, located at 271 Meridian Street in East Boston, has applied for a common bachelor seven day wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. The restaurant is a ground level with seating for 32. Ovens, food preparation area, freezers, and cold food storage are in the large basement area. The restaurant is one long room, approximately 1500 square feet with a grill, food display cases, and menu signage in the area with seating in the back of the restaurant. Manager Aaron S. Young Roses, closing time 11 p.m. Attorney Scott Holmes. Thank you. Good morning, members of the board, Commissioner, and welcome, Danny Green, also to the board. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Roses Group. Uh, we were here some time ago, and the issue arose that uh, Fernando Roses uh, was not a U.S. citizen. Uh, we have since corrected that uh, with the Secretary of State's office and adjusted the corporation or the LLC so that Aaron, uh, who's sitting there on the screen next to Fernando, is uh, and also his wife, is the uh, large shareholder, this, the majority shareholder. Um, we have made that adjustment, uh, and I've proven that to, uh, to the board. Um, to re refresh everyone's recollection, this is a little bakery restaurant that sits on Meridian Street in East Boston that is serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And through the pandemic, they have struggled um, to try and stay in business. And the in hope is to get this license for beer and wine only. And uh, just to remind everyone, this is strictly for the drinking uh, on the premises with food. Uh, it's not going to be a change in operation whatsoever. Uh, the beer and wine will not be stored in the front of the store uh, so that young children or anybody walking by uh, will see it. It's really to try and satisfy the demands of their clientele and to also boost some business. Uh, Aaron is, is equally experienced in the food and alcohol business as, as, as is her husband. As I said, Fernando has uh, been working in restaurants for three or four uh, years uh, recently on his own. But before that, he's been since 2009 in the food industry. Aaron is the same. She's been in, I think if I, my memory serves me, she worked uh, at that place by the federal courthouse. I can't remember, she'll refresh my recollection. But she will be the manager of record. She's a US citizen. She's a resident, uh, they both are of Winthrop. And um, we have been before the community. Uh, we have been before the Eagle Hill Civic Association, which is a remarkable civic association. If anybody ever gets the chance to sit in one of those meetings, you'd be impressed about how much people care. We got the endorsement of both the civic association and, and great responses and great encouragement from the community. And with that, I'll let Aaron answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Um Mrs. Roses for joining us. Your um, attorney um, covered a lot of the questions I had. But one final question is, do you have experience, uh, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of our board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Okay. I couldn't hear her. Speak up. <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. Um, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. No, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes. Good, 
Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'm testifying on behalf of my colleague, Lena Tremelli. Um, there was an abutters meeting held where attendees voiced strong support. And like was mentioned, they met with the Eagle Hill Civic Association who voted in support of this application as well. So our office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Michael Benetti from the office of Boston City Council and Lydia Edwards. Council would like to go on record in support. Great. Thank you. Are there any, are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, please. Hello. And please identify yourself and then you may speak. Thank you. I'm Gladys Oliveros from East Boston Main Street. And I'd like to be in record and support it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now calling item 19, Grub Street, Inc., doing business as Grub Street, located at 50 Liberty Drive, has applied for a common victualler seven-day wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above in one large room on the ground floor comprised of cafe space with seating areas and service counter, food prep area and kitchen in the rear with storage and office space together with additional bookstore space with lounge seating in one additional room on ground floor for event space and additional seating. Seasonal April to October outdoor seating on private property along Waterside Drive, 34 seats with an 11 p.m. closing hour. Second floor to include additional storage, restrooms and office space together with podcasting room and instructor space, community lounge area and seven classroom spaces. Manager Ian Jude Chio, closing time 12 a.m. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members, and uh, Mr. Green, congratulations on your appointment and look forward to working with you. The uh, application is for Grub Street, which is a um, 501c3 corporation whose um, charter is to support the development of writers, uh, nurture readers and arts audiences and provide educational opportunities for people of all backgrounds and ages. They are presently located in um, a uh, rather cramped space in the Piano Row block on Boylston Street um, and uh, have uh, operated out of there and are literally running out of space and had this opportunity in the uh, new Liberty Wharf building in the seaport to take over space where they would be able to have classrooms, functions, uh, writers coming to address people and the like, and just have a, a nicer, more open space and obviously sit right on the harbor. Um, with us this morning is uh, the proposed manager of record, Mr. Chow. Uh, with us also Lou Valena from uh, Grub Street. Uh, this is a, um, we think a very uh, positive use of space in another, a part of the city that otherwise uh, you know, operations like Grub Street wouldn't be allowed to, to afford to be there. Uh, they've had very positive reactions from uh, the building that they are in. There are approximately 11 letters of support. They had their uh, abutters meeting in that building lobby. Uh, so the folks in the, in the building are very well aware and very supportive of this application. Uh, in addition, we uh, attended a, a very successful meeting of the Four Point Neighborhood Association. And I believe the board is in support of, uh, in, in receipt of their letter of support. Uh, so we, we come before you today as a, uh, a valuable charitable undertaking uh, who could really grow and begin to offer more services to more people uh, and be able to utilize a space where literally writers and uh, educational uh, folks can come and present and interact with uh, people in a, in a really beautiful setting. So uh, we hope you will uh, find that there is a public need for this application. And we're certainly here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chow, are you currently an approved manager of record by this board? I saw him uh -oh. somewhere. No, currently not. Okay. No. I'm sorry, You're, you are or you are not? Not. Okay. Not. Um, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? I am, yes. You've experienced in the food and beverage industry? 
I do, yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I am, yes. Okay. At the location on Boylston Street, is there um, presently a liquor, a beer and wine license there? No, there is this, this opportunity, this new space, the opportunity presented itself for them to finally have uh, you know, presentation space and um, function space. And that was the reason for the request for the beer and wine license. They have their, their, their space on Boylston Street is, uh, it all would remind you out of a, something out of a Charles Dickens novel. It's a quite cramped and old space and small, you know, connected rooms and impossible really to do the kind of work that they would like to do uh, and, and are able to do at this new location. So what kind of events do you plan on hosting at this space? Lou, can you take that? I, I, can, I can take that. Okay. So we, we plan on having poetry slams, um, uh, book launches, uh, book readings. We might have an you know, occasional uh, movie night. Um, we have a, 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 a TV on the stage that we can uh, have movies and um, so and we hope to do a lot of things on the, in the outdoor with the community as well and we've been working with uh, the city around some of those plannings um, for that as well. So what is the total capacity of your event space? If you were having the largest event you could possibly have in the space, how many, what is the capacity? I believe it's 125. Okay. And that's just the event space. So the first floor has our cafe, bookstore, and then the event space. So, I mean, we could, there could be moments when the, when there are folks in the bookstore and the cafe at the same time as an event going on. And Madam Chair, may I just, before I, before I, I leave it, um, if you have other questions, I'll, I'll obviously you, you uh, will make them, but if the board does not have licenses available, we'd certainly request that you approve the CV portion of this application without further hearing. <clears throat> okay. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the concept. I did see the application, but I haven't studied it yet. So if you had an event to be 125 people, the outdoor space would be 34 seats. And um, on the ground floor, um, the cafe seating and all that um, area, how, many, how much seating oh, is there? For the cafe, the, the occupancy is about 20. Okay. And the outdoor is 34 seats? Yep. And the bookstore is about 16. Okay. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Corona, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do. Um, if, a, if an event's not going on, how is the space gonna be operated on a, a daily basis? Yeah. The, the, Currently now the, the quarter square books is, is in, is managing our bookstore and part of the bookstore is actually in the event space. So, so the, the, the event space is flexible where we can move books out onto the sides if we need to have an event. And we have doors that close that. But during the day, uh, book patrons, writers, readers um, can, sit at tables along the side of the window. They can do writing, they can be in meeting groups, they can be browsing the bookstore, they can be sitting at the cafe. So that's kind of what we see happening on that floor during the day. So on a general day basis, it'll operate as a cafe bookstore where people can purchase uh, beer or wine and do their thing within the cafe and bookstore space. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. No question. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services, would like to go on record in support and also point out that the Four Point Neighborhood Association also wrote a letter in support. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Ode Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and the Four Point Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Alicia Payne here on behalf of Councillor Flaherty, which can you go on record and support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? 
Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number 20, Food Fiesta Group, LLC, doing business as Casa Bonita Mexican Grill, located at 1033 Massachusetts Ave in Roxbury, has applied for a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic license to be exercised on the above. The restaurant consists of 3,094 square feet on a single floor with an outdoor seating area. There was one entrance and two exits. The indoor capacity is 42 and the outdoor capacity is 24 for a total capacity of 66. The outdoor dining area is on private property and it will be seasonal open from April 1st to November 1st. The proposed hours for indoor are 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. and the proposed hours for outdoor 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. The outdoor space is approximately 12 feet wide and 65 feet long, 780 square feet. Manager Felipe Duran, closing time 2 a.m. Attorney Jennifer Allen. Good morning again, Jennifer Allen on behalf of Food Fiesta Group um, in our request for a new all alcohol license for Mr. Duran's new Mexican restaurant located at 1033 Mass Ave. Uh, Mr. Duran is the proposed manager and 100% stockholder. He's also logged into the meeting. So if you have any questions for him as well, he'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, so Mr. Duran is opening up a new Mexican restaurant, bringing authentic Mexican food to the neighborhood. And what better way to go about this than with a margarita? Um, there are limited restaurants in this area and there's no Mexican restaurants in close proximity. Uh, previously at this location, there was another restaurant which closed down a few years ago. The building has been vacant ever since. And Mr. Duran is doing extensive renovations to bring some new life to it. Um, we've submitted those engineering plans as well. And I also sent over some other proposed pictures of uh, what it will look inside, which were just to give you a nice idea of what it'll look like. Um, as I already mentioned, the capacity is 66. That includes the outdoor seating and the indoor seating. The indoor seating is 42 for the capacity, and then the outdoor patio would be 24, which again would be seasonal from April to November. Um, Mr. Duran also has another restaurant, which he has been operating for almost 20 years now. So he's well qualified, has plenty of experience in this field. He's familiar with the rules of the ABCC and the City of Boston Licensing Board. He's also a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. Uh, his qualifications and experience in this field uh, will ensure the sustainability of this new restaurant and the ability to serve the new customers responsibly while bringing some new life to this area with something new there, which has been gone for a while. Thank you, Attorney um, Allen. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Mr. Duran, where is your... Where is your other restaurant? Is it in Boston? Uh, it's in Roslyn. Oh, my name is Felipe Duran. I will be the menu on record. Uh, my other restaurant is called Guida and Tambora Restaurant. It's located at 4014 Washington. I'm in Washington City, in Rosendale. Okay. And how long have you how long have you been operating that restaurant? Uh, I think I believe it's 13 years now. Did you say 30 years? 13. 13, okay. Trying to figure out how you could have a restaurant. You could own a restaurant for 30 years. Okay. And um, perhaps your attorney knows the answer to this question. I'm just curious, my own edification. What was the restaurant that was previously located at this location? It used oh. to. Oh, Mr. Duran might know. I don't know. Go ahead. It used to call Hang House. I mean, they used to serve like fried chicken. I okay. mean, they usually do pizza and things like that. Uh, but they run out of business. I mean, uh, I think I believe it wasn't the COVID started, I mean, like a year and a half ago. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I have no further questions, commissioners, <laughs> Corinne or? No question, thank you. Not at the moment, thank you. Great, are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Jason Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to go on record in support of this proposal and a butters meeting was held on September 27th in which the applicant answered all questions and concerns raised by the immediate abutters and received support on said meeting. I, have, I also have no letters of opposition. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item 21, Anthony's Market Inc. doing business as Anthony's Market, located at 407 Meridian Street in East Boston, has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premise is on the ground floor food store that is approximately 2,000 square feet and basically L-shaped with two major sections of the store, one large section at the entrance and then a section off of that where fresh produce is sold. It has three doors to the outside. It offers food products from around the world to neighborhood customers and has been in continuous operation since 2013 and is family run. Manager, Elise Fernandez, closing time, 11 p.m. Attorney Scott Holmes. Attorney Holmes. Thank you very much, Attorney Green. Uh, good morning again, Scott Holmes. And with me is the president of uh, Anthony's Market Inc., Ellis Fernandez, one of the hardest working women in the business. Uh, we are seeking uh, Section 15 in order to uh, sell retail uh, wine and beer in the store. Uh, the store has actually been open since 1995, only in its current location since 2013. It's a remarkable store on the top of Eagle Hill there in East Boston. Uh, when you walk in, you're just uh, amazed by the various products from the Spanish Latin American world. Uh, it was a real experience for me. Uh, the idea here is there's nothing else in the area. People come in and they buy their Latin American food, uh, Spanish flowers, uh, hot sauces, oils, and this would be just a chance to further the business with the sale of uh, just wine and beer. The idea in the store is, because we had this conversation with the Eagle Hill Civic Association, is to not have the beer and wine anywhere near the front of the store where little kids might come in to buy candy or sweets. The idea would be to put this in the back of the store and uh, it's family run. So there's always gonna be a Fernandez at the front of the counter, making sure that everything is run properly as far as this goes. Uh, it is a remarkable place. We did have our hearing before the Civic Association. Again, I, I just can't tell you enough about how impressive they are uh, and concerned about their neighborhood. And we answered all the questions and got their overwhelming support. In the point of being honest, uh, I was trying to get in touch with Lisa He, I think her name was, not knowing that she had worked with the, uh, left working with the city. We are scheduled for the community meeting tomorrow night. I was finally able to get Lena Tremelli on board as far as this goes. Uh, and we expect to get a favorable result from that as well. I apologize to the board if I had jumped the gun, but it's been months trying to get in touch with Lisa He, and I never got a response back. And I only recently learned that she's not with the city anymore. And I just reached out to anybody and thankfully Lena was there to help uh, schedule this. Uh, we are asking the board to grant this. And if there's any questions of Ellis, she's here on board and ready to answer. Ellis, unmute. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Fernandez, for joining us. I'm going to ask you the four questions we ask anyone who's applying for um, a, to be a manager of record for a beer, wine, or alcohol license. Are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank um, you. Attorney Holmes, where is the closest uh, retail package store that sells beer and wine? Uh, it would be down in uh, almost Maverick Square. I, I don't know if you're that familiar with, uh, with, uh, with Eastie. So uh, if you come out of the tunnel, uh, and take a left out of the tunnel if you technically could. There is a liquor store down the end there. This uh, store, Anthony's Market, is uh, on top of a hill. It probably a mile or so, mile and a half or so away. The liquor store that I, it sells is no food or no other items. It's just a straight liquor store. Uh, this would be the only place in the area, except maybe going into Chelsea that I just don't know. But as far as East Boston goes, the only other one that I'm aware of is down on that in Maverick Square, or just about what they call Maverick Square in Eastie. 
Okay, so you have not had your community meeting yet. Honestly, no, it's tomorrow night at six o'clock. I, I just couldn't get it. I, That's I fine, just, I just wanted to know. Yeah, no, 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 it was upsetting for me because you know, you send emails and you leave messages, and I know it's an important been, part of this process. There's been, lot, there's been some, um, you know, staff changes. Um, sure. sure. So I'm going to see if Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon um, have any questions. No questions. Thank you. Not the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or the representatives? Hi, uh, yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, speaking on behalf of Lena Tremelli. Um, like Attorney Holmes mentioned, the applicant met with the Civic Association and received their vote of support. Um, the abutters meeting is scheduled for tomorrow night, so our office would ask the board to hold the vote until that meeting is completed. Thank you. Okay, I do, I do have a question. Is the business plan, does the business plan include selling singles? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, so you would you would um, support that being a condition on the license that there'd be no singles sold? At the moment, certainly. It's that important to this business and uh, and we will honor that. Okay. And good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Michael Vanetti from the Office of Boston City Council, Lydia Edwards. Councilor would like to go on record in support of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And those Thank are you. all the items before the board today. Thank you very much, everybody.